Hello everyone, welcome back to another Math Mondays. Um, in this series, I review a book that falls within the category of math, and I love math. I'm not particularly good at math, but I really, really, really enjoy learning about math, so I like to read books about it and share what I learn or what I find interesting about it. So today, I'm going to be reviewing this book. Now this book, besides the shiny cover, also has this color changing title which immediately attracted my attention and this book is Fractals on the Edge of Chaos by Oliver Linton and it's a very small book and I thought it would be a really good introduction to the topic of fractals that didn't require a lot of heavy knowledge or heavy um, skills in math. So fractals were brought to math's attention if I understand correctly in 1982 by Benoit Mandelbrot and obviously they've been around for a lot longer. They exist in nature. For example, the Nautilus show, um, that's probably a very famous example, is a, is a repeating pattern. So a fractal is something that as you zoom in, it like retains the pattern of if you zoomed out. And perhaps that sounds complicating, but, complicated, but the more you look at these images, the more you start to intuitively understand what a fractal is. So the first thing I discovered when I opened this book, before I even started reading this book, is the name of an effect that I have been curious about for a while. So when I was a little kid, we used to eat something called, I think it was called cocoa wheat sometimes for breakfast, and it came in a box. And on the box, there was a boy eating the cocoa wheats. And on the box, on the table, there was the same box that was the big box. So it was like an image within an image. And that would repeat and repeat and repeat. And here, next to the table of contents, they explain that exact effect, and there's a name for it. Apparently that name is called the Droste effect, based on uh, a Dutch tin of cocoa which utilized the same idea. And I've seen this used before, um, or again and again. Um, I don't know if this was the first image or if this was just the the one that gave it its name. But I finally learned the name of this thing that I have been wondering about since I was perhaps five or six, I was very young when I noticed this, and it so intrigued me, and I remember sitting at my kitchen table thinking if I could just go further in and further in and further in and further in, it would just keep going, and that was very mind-blowing to a five-year-old kid. So finally, before I even got to the actual name of this book, I finally learned the name of this phenomenon or this style and art. Um, this technique, that's what they call it, the technique. And yeah, I was like, I immediately like this book. I think this was a great, great book. So this book is set up so each page, we have the introduction. Each page is just this. Like this is everything you're going to read on this page, and the next page is something different. And you have plenty of illustrations. The two or three paragraphs they used to explain are very straightforward. I do think having some basic understanding of math, particularly like the concept of imaginary numbers or the complex or a complex numbers, um, would be helpful for understanding this, but I don't think you need any advanced or specialized training in math to really understand or enjoy this book. In fact, if you don't really understand either of the two things I talked about, um, if you feel like I don't know what a complex number is, that's fine. You can just look at the pretty pictures and I feel like you will come away with an appreciation of fractals just the same as anyone who understood the math that was going behind. Perhaps with the math you could do more interesting things, but fractals are very interesting to just look at, plain and simple. So just look at them and be, be fine. I wanted to share a couple of, first of all I'm going to share the, the interesting fun fact, which is early on in the book. And that is the Koch snowflake. Um, it's called the first fractal. So, I don't really know how to show this. Um, so if you take a line, and then, the problem is it's too light for me to show you. Then you add a bump in it, and now you have four sections of the line. And then you add a bump in each straight section again. And you can do that infinitely. So if you arrange, let me see if I can, if I can, this is what I'm talking about. We're adding a bump in each section of the line. 
But if you arrange those starting lines as a triangle, as we do over here, and do that infinitely, so you start with a triangle and then you infinitely keep adding bumps, you actually get a structure, this cock snowflake, that has infinite length, because you've infinitely expanded the length by adding all those infinite line segments. But the area inside this snowflake is actually finite, which is very, very... I like things like that. Like, there is that, um... What is it called? A trumpet? It's that item that has, like, infinite outside area, but you could fill the inside of it with the paint that you could never paint the outside with. Things like that, and that's just absolutely fascinating. It makes more sense if you can sit down and read the illustrations, and if they're very clearly explained. It's early on in the book, and it's not complicated at all. So I would recommend just looking through all these and reading through um, all these snowflakes they show, because it is very fascinating. I thought that was very interesting. Two other sections in the book that I really enjoyed were iterated functions, and attractors and repellers and both of these I just spent some time playing around with a piece of paper and some some math functions just to see what happened and it was really fun I really enjoyed doing both those sections I kind of put down the book grabbed a piece of paper played around with it see what happened with it and I had a lot of fun <clears throat> Also, um, chaos versus random. There is an actual difference between that, which I actually did not know up until now, which I'm not sure why I never learned about that, but the difference between what is chaos and the difference between what is random, there is an actual definition. So if you're curious, I'd recommend checking out this book. Um, I also wanted to share... this page, page 43, where they do that zoom in thing that I talked about, where the more you zoom in, the more weird, complex. So here, we start here, and we just continue to zoom in. And I could look at this page for a long time and still have stuff to see. This was absolutely fascinating. And that's why I say that even if you don't understand some of the math, especially as the little sections move further, um, don't be intimidated. Just kind of enjoy the pictures and see what you can get out of that because I think there's a lot of interesting stuff you can kind of intuitively glean by looking at these images that they have generated. Overall, this book is only 50 some odd pages. It looks like 55 pages. And for that reason, I think it's a really good introductory book. It has a lot of pictures. All the explanations are super simple and they don't go too in-depth. So you're never going to get overwhelmed or out of your league with the explanations or fall too far behind. Because I find that's a thing in math books where if you don't understand some previous concept, all of a sudden the rest of the chapters you're very, very confused on. And that doesn't really happen in this book because there isn't really time to happen in this book. Which I think is the beauty of it. So... If you want to go more in-depth, you probably have to get a bigger book, for lack of a better term, a, a more in-depth book on fractals, but I think this is a great place to start. Plus, I love the cover, and it's cute, so why not? So, I would recommend giving this a try. I gave this a four star. I thought it was fascinating. I thought it was the perfect entry-level book, and I really enjoyed my time reading this. I just sat down in an evening, played through some of the problems on a piece of paper, and enjoyed looking at the pretty pictures. If anyone else has read this or has any other book on fractals that they would recommend, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. Anyways, everyone, thank you, and have a great day.